Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be inside and I want to talk about a plant that I brought inside back in the fall. Um, and it's growing uh, quite luxuriously at this point. And this plant is actually in full bloom right now, so uh, let's talk about it. Okay, so here we have a uh, beautiful plant. It's in the nightshade family. It's commonly referred to, I, th I believe, as the lychee tomato. The Latin name is Solanum sesimbrii folium. And you can see the, let's kind of look at a, an individual leaf here. You can kind of see the leaves kind of look some, somewhat between like a tomato leaf and a watermelon leaf. And they have some pretty good, and they have some pretty good spines on them here. You can kind of see uh, in the back here a little bit. And here are the flowers. Uh, beautiful white petals. Uh, they've got some pretty nice big white petals. Uh, I have had issues with the flowers falling off at the at the base here when they're done flowering, so they're not actually going to fruit. Uh, maybe some of them will. Um, I'm wondering if it's a similar issue with like peppers or maybe some tomatoes, uh, where sometimes the blossoms can just kind of fall off um, after after flowering and they don't produce as much fruit. Uh, and this could be a nutritional imbalance in the in the soil. Uh, of course, the soil is kind kind of hard to to really uh, control and and have a, a really nice balance in it, being that it's in a pot, so it's removed from its natural environment. Uh, so I may try to see if I can help fix this issue uh, and see if we can actually get some fruit um, out of it. So this plant I started last February, I believe, and I germinated the seeds in a um, kind of like an, a mini incubator. I germinated them in a wet paper towel that was inside a plastic container uh, to kind of help control the heat and humidity uh, and under uh, and I, I uh, put that over top of a, of a, a heat mat. Um, I had a little bit of a towel in between uh, to help kind of so that you know the seeds wouldn't bake or anything. And I had a few few germinate and I transplanted them in uh, little pots, and then I had them under grow lights uh, for a couple of months, and then I moved them out into the garden back in uh, back in May. None of them got to the point of bearing fruit. Uh, part of that was on me. I uh, ended up getting pretty busy throughout the summer, wasn't taking care of the plants, uh, or I wasn't around uh, quite so much to take care of the plants, uh, so some of them uh, may have gone through some drought stress, especially probably earlier on. So they it didn't start really taking off until like later on in the season. So I dug up one of these plants and brought it indoors uh, to hopefully see if it can flower. Uh, I might even be able to. I'm um, wondering if like like a tomato plant would, if I can take some of these uh, growing stems and then um, maybe if they can root. Uh, in, in other pots, I can uh, propagate them that way. Uh, I might do a different video on that, experimenting with that, see if that uh, actually works. I also want to note that we uh, that this is a strawberry planter. Generally what you'd do is you'd fill it up with soil and then you'd stick like strawberry plants or maybe flowers. Um, doesn't, doesn't have to be strawberries, but you can uh, uh, stick them in, in each of the holes on the side of the pot including at the top as well, and you can uh, grow plants that way. I've never really used it like that. This pot just happened to be large enough for uh, the root base that I had uh, for this plant, um, so uh, that was what I had available, that was what I used. And because it has holes on the side, I do have to be careful when I water it. Otherwise, uh, if I water it too quickly at once, uh, it spills off uh, the sides and onto the floor. So I just do a little bit at a time, uh, and, and that seems to that seems to be okay. Uh, I also have this towel here, mainly just that was to protect the stem from rubbing against uh, the edge of the pot. I didn't want to damage it uh, or put it through any unnecessary stress, uh, so I just put a little bit of a towel here uh, to help kind of act as a buffer. So uh, at this point I just want to focus on one specific aspect of this plant today in this video, and it has to do with the flowers. 
All right, so I have a paintbrush here, and this is how I like to pollinate flowers, especially when it's in the wintertime, uh, and, you know, the bees and wasps are not around, um, or hopefully they're not around, being that this is inside the house. Um, so what I do is I do the pollination myself. Uh, now, considering that these flowers have been falling off anyway, I uh, don't know how, the, how well this is going to work, but I have done this in the past with tomato plants, and... Um, this works fantastic. And I was actually able to get vine-ripe tomatoes growing off plants, and, and that was a special treat, uh, even when it's all snowy and cold and windy outside, and I had fresh tomatoes uh, to be able to eat. So before I demonstrate what I do, I do want to note that uh, make sure you have a clean brush, especially if you have different varieties of a particular plant. Be aware of that. Be you want to make sure that the pollen from one variety of plant is not going to mix with the pollen of another variety of plant, uh, particularly if you want to uh, maintain that same overall genetic makeup. Otherwise, if you're mixing two different species of the same variety, uh, there is a potential that you could create a hybrid. And that may sound interesting, and if you're into hy hybridization, uh, maybe that's something you do. But if you want to maintain the genetics in a particular variety, uh, you want to make sure that you have a clean brush. Uh, make sure, you know, uh, if, if you did pollinate a different variety, make sure, you know, you, uh, you wash it out, uh, you dry it out before you start pollinating a new variety. So, so with that, what I do here is I just take, uh, take the brush and I just kind of, um, I just kind of move it around on the, uh, um, on the anthers, make sure I kind of get onto the stigma there. You can kind of see the stigma, the, the green line here in between the anthers, the yellow parts, kind of hard to see on the video. Um, but yeah, this... This is the green, and then the, these are the f uh, the anthers around it. And so you want to take the, the pollen from the males, and you want to make sure you get it on the, the female stigma. And then I'll go go to a new flower, and maybe this one, oh, maybe this one here. get this one down here too. The pollen grains are really small, so and all you need is one to hit the edge of the stigma. The flowers, by the way, also have a nice floral smell. It's not super overpowering, but it, it is it is, uh, it, you, can, you can tell it's in the air, it does have a really nice sweet floral aroma. Um, definitely a welcome smell to have in the middle of February. Uh, if you want to be more effective, you can use your other hand and kind of hold the flower steady as you do that, but I'm holding the camera, so um, this is what we got. All right, there we go. The lychee tomato. I've been watering this plant fairly regularly, usually once a day, once every other day, sometimes twice a day. It's good to check the soil um, if it starts drying out. You want to maintain an, an equal balance. You don't want it to be drenched, drenched right, because you don't want the soil to be going anaerobic on you, but, um, and you don't want it to dry out because then, uh, you know, the microbial life and, 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 the, and the plant roots can become stressed. Uh, I have also just been using like some juices from like cooked vegetables, you know, after the liquid has cooled that I cook them in, I'll help kind of supplement watering with that and uh, just it helps add like some various nutrients and, and things like that into the soil to help kind of balance out some of the nutri nutrition. You know, for example, if you cook like beans or something like that, f like for example, like kidney beans that I've cooked that I've grown in the garden and I cook those and the cooking water uh, may have uh, some residual protein in it from, uh, from, from the beans being cooked in there. 
Uh, and protein, of course, contains uh, nitrogen. And, and that can be a nice fertilizer, but beans also contain some potassium, calcium, magnesium, and these other minerals that the plants can use uh, to optimize uh, growth potential. Uh, we do also have a little bit of aphid pressure. pressure. Uh, it's only on specific leaves. I don't know how well you, how well you can see it, uh, but on this leaf here, it's a little bit more curled than the others, and you can kind of see some of the aphids, uh, the some of the aphids on there. They're not all over the plant. Um, I'm not particularly worried about. I've found some ladybugs in the house, so I've uh, I've also just been putting a couple of ladybugs on here. But other than that, they seem to be doing pretty well. Um, and photosynthesizing a lot, a lot better than uh, what I expected. I, you know, generally I, <clears throat> I would have anticipated that the leaves would have been a lighter green, even this, uh, even into Feb February. And in some cases they are a little uh, lighter green. I mean that's fresher growth too, though. But I may try to do a video on making like a foliar fertilizer kind of thing to help kind of give some supplementation to uh, the nutritional needs of this plant. Uh, see if we can take care of some of those aphids and see if we can prevent uh, so many of these flowers dropping off after they after they flower. So uh, with that, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. hope you got something from it and uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. All right, take care.